first annual virtual conference. Our next session is entitled PKI, the security solution for the Internet of Things. Our presenter is Mike Nelson. Mike Nelson is the VP of IoT Security at DigiCart. DigiCert, my apologies, a leader in digital security. In this role, Mike oversees the company's strategic IoT market development for critical infrastructure industries. Mike frequently consults with organizations, contributes to media reports, and speaks at industry conferences about how technology can be used to improve cybersecurity for connected systems. Before DigiCert, Mike spent his career in healthcare IT, including a time at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, GE Healthcare, and Levitt Partners. Mike's passion for the industry stems from his personal experience as a type 1 diabetic and his use of connected technology in his treatment. Please welcome Mike Nelson. Hey, everybody, and thanks for joining this session today. I'm really excited to be with you, and thanks to uh, Encryption Consulting for hosting this great event. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a really important security topic that uh, Encryption Consulting and all of us, I'm sure. sure care about, which is public key infrastructure, but I'm going to be talking about it in relation to the Internet of Things and why it's a great starting point for securing IoT deployments. Uh, I'm the Vice President of IoT Security at DigiCert. I've worked with hundreds of organizations deploying um, complicated, complex, uh, challenging um, IoT deployments. And I'm really uh, excited to share with you some insights that we have learned that I hope can be helpful uh, as, as you think about the challenge of securing the Internet of Things. But before we jump into the content, I think it's kind of fun to look back at the history of the Internet. It's launched in 1969 with a, a RAPNET and um, the Queen sending the first email in 1972. Um, I'll just highlight a couple more of these points. I think it's important to think about the history of the Internet as we get into connected devices and how they're actually changing the Internet. Um, in 1989, uh, information was made available for the first time, made it easy to publish and access information. Um, many people consider that the official launch. Many people don't know that in 1990, the first IoT device was actually launched, and it was a toaster. There's a gentleman who thought it would be fun to try to connect and control his toaster oven uh, through the use uh, of the Internet. Uh, Amazon, eBay, Google then evolved over the next several years. Um, and by 2003, almost 50% of UK homes were using the Internet. Uh, the launch of music. You guys remember the painful process of downloading music and uh, hearing your, your modem connecting and, and then taking about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to download one song. 2004 is when that growth uh, was happening. And by 2005, we then started seeing social media platforms like Flickr and Facebook. YouTube came shortly after that and began uh, really changing the way um, the internet was used, making it much more accessible. Today, uh, as we look at connected devices, there are north of 36 billion devices being used. Uh, IoT devices are popping up in every corner of our lives and they're providing tremendous benefits. I'm gonna talk about that. But the internet continues to evolve. It continues to do more in our lives to bring greater value you know, it starts by communication network, and then it evolves to e-commerce, it evolves to music, it evolves to uh, social media networking. And now today it's evolving and it's allowing us to gain greater insights, greater data on the devices that we are using in our daily lives to improve the quality and experience of the things that we do. As the number of devices go up, um, the complexity of securing those devices becomes more and more challenging. And with that increase of connectivity, that increase of complexity, the threats of those devices uh, goes up significantly. 
Um, I speak with people all the time. And there's a common phrase that says, um, people say this all the time, that says anything that's connected to the internet will eventually be hacked. And so as everything from medical devices to uh, soil sensors to uh, connected satellites become um, available, all of those devices present risks and are expanding the attack surface for hackers. So the question is, will those risks offset the benefits? Which is going to play out? And I'm, I'm a big believer that the Internet of Things is not going to go away. I think most would believe that. Most would agree with me on that. And that's just because the benefits are so great. Having connectivity to our external world, we're now seeing connectivity from a car. You pull up to a Starbucks and it knows who you are and it knows what you want to order. And it has your financial credentials securely stored and allows that transaction to happen seamlessly. Um, allowing devices to be monitored in the field, whether it be a freight um, uh, uh, car going down, the, going down the road and monitoring air pressure. Um, light bulbs in commercial office buildings, knowing when they're going to go out so that you can have predictive maintenance. Um, all of this data becomes actionable and that actionable data creates more efficiency in our lives. It, it brings cost savings to, to businesses um, and it improves overall the quality of our lives. But it does create risk and those risks can be to the end consumer. Um, you know, hackers can gain unauthorized access, can get control of those devices. We've seen recent attacks of water pipelines and gas pipelines uh, that are really scary. And, and the potential threat of those attacks uh, can be catastrophic. Information security is always important. But in these attacks, companies also lose uh, public trust. There's a lot of damage that can happen. Uh, St. Jude Medical, uh, they manufacture a cardiac device there was a vulnerability that was published uh, one of their uh, one of their devices, and uh, overnight their stock dropped uh, about seventeen percent, bringing about twenty six. Um, I'll just say bringing a, a big loss to their organization. So the risks are not just to consumers; it's business, it's reputation, it's the legal costs uh, that go to helping remediate the damages that can happen uh, through a cyber attack. Having said that, for me, there's even a more important reason. This is a picture of my cute uh, daughter. This was a picture of her when she uh, was three years old. The picture on the left was uh, taken about four days before she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And the picture on the right was is a picture of her about six months after she had been diagnosed. And it was the first day when she and uh, my wife and I decided to put a connected device uh, on her and use it in her treatment. The device is known as a continuous glucose monitor. And every five minutes, it takes a glucose reading and it sends it to that connected device, which now is actually uh, can be a smart device. Um, and it sends a, a data transmission letting us know what her blood sugar is. That reading can then be shared with to my smartphone, to my wife's smartphone, to her teacher when she goes to school, and it allows for greater control. The introduction of this technology has been life-changing for my wife and I. You can imagine the peace of mind we have when she goes to bed at night knowing what her blood sugar is, and if it goes too low, our phones start beeping at us. But it also introduces risk. If we get a reading that tells us her blood sugar is over 300, we would dose her appropriately. If that reading is incorrect, that dosage, if, if it tells us her blood sugar is 300 and her, her blood sugar is actually 85, that could be catastrophic to my daughter. The integrity of that data is absolutely critical. You think about business environments uh, where executives are making uh, big decisions based on the data that they're gathering from connected devices. Integrity with IoT is so important. And public key infrastructure is a great way to ensure that integrity. I am certainly grateful that the manufacturer of these devices have, have taken the steps necessary to ensure that security. Because when it becomes personal, it becomes that much more important that it's done uh, properly. <clears throat> 
Internet of Things devices have three common vulnerabilities. If you read about any exploit in the news or through uh, ISOs, you will find three common vulnerabilities. The first one is improper or a lack of good authentication. And that can be a lack of user authentication, so hard-coded credentials, um, not requiring good um, password practices, not enabling multi-factor authentication. Um, but user authentication is, is a common um, vulnerability that we see in devices. But it's also the authentication of what that device is connecting to. Many IoT devices connect to gateways, they connect to servers, they connect to other devices, they connect to networks. Making sure that anything that that device is connecting to is properly authenticated is very important and is a very common mistake that we see or a vulnerability that we see with devices. The second one is about the confidentiality of the data. We frequently see confidential data passed in free text from point one to, to an, from one point to another. Um, that data in transit must be secured and handled confidentially. Um, data at rest also needs to be secured. And we, we frequently see devices that retain data, they store data, and that data is left and stored in plain text. The final common vulnerability is about integrity, like I just spoke to. Um, integrity of firmware updates, knowing that that update has not been modified in transit is very important. Knowing that any data that's being generated and transmitted uh, from point A to point B arrives and has not been manipulated. So having data integrity, um, having firmware update or code integrity, but then also integrity with how the device operates. Um, we frequently see attacks where configuration settings are manipulated, uh, causing the device to um, operate in a state that was not intended. Um, and so knowing that uh, a connected device is operating as intended and that there's integrity uh, with its operations is really important. And these three common vulnerabilities, I'm gonna be talking about um, how PKI can be used to address these, but it's really, um, for those of us who know PKI, PKI is really good um, with those three things, authentication, encryption, and integrity. And I'm gonna get in and, and talk about that. A friend of mine, Scott Irvin, who is a very good security researcher, um, he's, he's done a lot of, of great work and published a lot of good things, but, um, he spoke at an event for Digicert a little while ago. And, um, he said, if you're not, if you're encrypting your data in transport, authenticating all your connections, signing all the code that runs on your devices, hackers move on to the next device. And I love that. It's those basic cybersecurity hygiene things that you need to do of authentication, encryption, and integrity that really... Um, provide a great starting point that deters deter hackers um, from continuing. So this is a list of uh, kind of a checklist that I have developed over the years uh, as I've worked with large manufacturers implementing uh, PKI and working with them on the security of their devices. Um, these are things that I would say are non-negotiable. These things need to be done uh, as a starting point for good device security, and I'll read through them. The first one is never trusting unauthenticated connections. If you are not, as I said, authenticating and knowing that anything connecting to your device is coming from a trusted source, you're off on the wrong uh, foot. The second one is never allow your device to run unsigned code. If a firmware update is sent that does not have a digital signature attached to ensure its integrity, do not allow that device to execute that script. The third is to not trust unsigned configuration data, making sure you're using digital signatures to sign uh, those settings and, and the data. Not trusting any unsigned data, I would add to that. Um, encrypting sensitive data whether that's at rest or in transit, encryption needs to be used for any type of sensitive data. And we are seeing a trend actually towards um, device manufacturers encrypting all data that's being transmitted. And I think that's a good practice. And then finally, the importance of 
being able to update a device. Uh, Internet of Things devices are all about connectivity. That connectivity should enable and allow you to update devices. Security is an ever evolving um, a, a practice. You need to continue to get better and make the things on your device uh, better. And those can be achieved through uh, OTA updates. <clears throat> and this is where I'll, I'll start jumping into public key infrastructure. Um, as we know, the three cornerstones of PKI are authentication, encryption, and integrity. Um, in an IoT environment, the authentication that we see manufacturers doing mostly, first is mutual authentication. Um, that it would be a device to a device, a device to gateway, a server, um, using uh, certificates for network authentication. And the practice here is that there is a certificate on the device and there's a certificate on the uh, whatever your device is connecting to and that enables that mutual authentication to know that whatever your device is connecting to is can be trusted the second uh keystone of, of pki is is encryption uh, particularly encryption in transit um, and using um, certificates and, and keys to ensure that that data is handled in a confidential way and then with integrity, uh, making sure that your developers, uh, before they uh, deploy code, um, uh, once it's been tested, you go through the right uh, DevOps process, that digital signatures are used uh, for code signing um, to make sure that that is stamped and approved from your organization and that it can be trusted. Uh, and once that device receives it, it looks for that signature uh, to ensure its integrity. We are seeing a trend of using signatures in the supply chain and using code signing in the, uh, in the supply chain to ensure the integrity of all the different component parts, whether that be software, uh, but to make sure that the supply chain that is going into a device is also secure. And I've already talked about configuration settings and um, any IP, I will just add a common practice we see with manufacturers is not just to, um, to secure and, and sign confidential data that's being generated by the device, but any IP data about your company that also might be uh, on the device or being transmitted uh, should also be secured. So moving on, um, a common discussion I have with manufacturers is what PKI really is. Um, there's a mindset that PKI is just technology. It's certificates, it's roots, um, it's the hardware that those reside on. But PKI is much more than that. And I, I want to point this out just to emphasize, if you are thinking about doing PKI and you're not thinking about it holistically, you need to do that. PKI is much more than the technology. It's a comprehensive framework that contains the set of roles, policies, and procedures that are needed to manage all of the technology, the certificates. Um, how are they gonna be used? How are they gonna be, what's your revocation policy? Um, if you don't have the roles, who's gonna be managing? Who's gonna be in charge of the different aspects of the PKI? If you don't have policies in place around governance, around revocation, around certificate renewal and life cycle, um, you need to have those well-defined or your PKI will grow to become unmanageable. Now I'd like to, to jump into um, common challenges that we hear from our, our customers and that, um, that they ask for our help to solve. And I'm just going to highlight three of them today. The first one is certificate provisioning, how to get certificates to devices. The second one is about device management, not certificate management, although that plays into it, but more on the device management through the use of certificate management. And then finally, we, we have seen a lot of challenges around code signing. I think the solar winds attack that happened um, recently has, um, has heightened awareness 
of bad code signing practices. And we're seeing a lot of organizations try to rectify and, and fix those. And I'll jump into those. So the first challenge I like to talk about is certificate provisioning. And the reason this is so hard is because devices, um, first of all, the quantity of devices, but the second is the decision you can really, you can provision a certificate to a device um, in the supply chain. So, mo so uh, IoT devices have secure micro uh, controllers on them. Most of them do, hopefully they do. Um, you can pre-provision certificates during the supply chain. You can do it at the point of manufacturing. Um, or you can provision certificates to devices once they're de deployed and in, in the field and when they call home. So we have seen a lot of manu manufacturers struggle to figure out when they want to do that. And the important thing is having a PKI provider that has flexibility that allows you to do all of these. Um, as, as I said, we have a partnership with uh, Aero Electronics uh, where um, our customers can request uh, chipsets that have our certificates pre-provisioned. They're what we call a birth certificate. And those go to the manufacturing line with the certificate already provisioned. So they don't have to change any of their manufacturing processes or procedures. Uh, and they go about installing that uh, chip into the device and it has that certificate already there. That's one approach. The second one is to do it at the point of manufacturing. This requires a little bit more uh, infrastructure uh, at your manufacturing line. We have on-premise, Digicert can provide on-premise or cloud-based solutions to, to get certificates and, and then be able to provision those from the manufacturing floor. Uh, we commonly see manufacturers take uh, this approach and we also see a wide variety of uh, on-prem and cloud-based approaches at the point of manufacturing. And that really comes down to the risk appetite of the manufacturer and what they're willing to tolerate. If they are willing to have a connection to the cloud, um, then uh, doing a cloud-based PKI makes sense. If they're not tolerant to that, then on-premise uh, might be the right option for them. Another, the second common challenge that we um, frequently hear about is related to device management. Um, public key infrastructure can be used to establish an identity of that device. Uh, you can put the serial number or whatnot embedded within the certificate profile, um, establishing a strong identity. The other challenge with devices that we hear from our customers is having a healthy view of the devices that are uh, in their portfolio but then ha having the ability to do reporting on those. What's the health of those devices? When do certificates expire? Um, what's the validity of those certificates? Um, being able to identify when challenges occur, where they are. So having strong device reporting that's chained to the certificate so that they have greater control. Having a list of certificates does not help you if it's not if it's not linked to the device and its identity. And so when we talk about management, it's really twofold. It's the device and it's the certificate, but having both of them enables much greater control, um, much greater reporting, and it gives much, it, it, gives, it gives greater clarity into the certificates and the devices that you have that are using PKI. And then finally, around certificate management, it's very important to have all of the things around uh, renewal, revocation. Um, Digicert has put a lot of focus into automation. And with IoT, when you get millions and millions of devices in the field, it's very important to automate some of those workflows. So when certificates are about to renew, having the ability to have an automated process uh, to do that, to take the burden off of, of your team. So the final challenge that I'm going to uh, I'm going to speak to today is about signing. And code signing really is uh, growing in its popularity right now and there are a lot of drivers to that. I think SolarWinds as I said is a big one. But we see some really horrific code signing practices. We see organizations that have one signing key and they put it on 
50 different thumb drives and they give it to all their engineers and they let anybody sign. Um, they don't control or, or they don't manage those signing keys. Um, it's very important to get control of your signing process. Make sure that your signing keys are secured, that you have proper user management, that you have um, that you have the ability to control who can sign what. Um, we have instances uh, where organizations, again, the on-premise question, uh, many of our customers leverage on-premise signing. Uh, many of them also leverage uh, cloud-based. It's important to go through um, and really understand what's going to work best for your organization. But I cannot emphasize enough the importance of getting control of your signing process. Do you know that your signing keys are, are secure? Do you know who can sign? When they sign, is there an audit log of what they signed, when they signed? Um, do you have proper key management uh, and key rotation strategies in place so that you're not using the same key to sign everything? And in a, in a uh, situation like that, if you have a problem and you've used the same signing key to sign everything and that key is compromised, you now have a massive problem on your hands that will require uh, a lot of effort to, to mitigate. Um, and then user management, as I said, making sure you know who is signing what and then uh, reporting and auditing is, is very important. Getting control of your signing process is so important. And with IoT and connected devices, um, knowing that everything you are deploying and sending to those devices has been signed, as I said, is very critical. All right, moving on. Um, Looking outside of IoT just for a minute, um, PKI in general is growing, not just with IoT, but in a lot of different ways. It's being used to solve more problems. And this is, uh, you know, this uh, this event today is is all about encryption and it's about it's about public key infrastructure. And so I know many of you know this, but I just want to emphasize that public key infrastructure is a security solution that is not going away more and more organizations are seeing it as a key component of their security posture, um, whether it be with email or Wi-Fi authentication, code signing, document signing, IoT, uh, smart cards, um, all of their web authentication and security. PKI is, uh, is a security approach that is solving a lot of problems for organizations. And because of that, it's very important to get control of that PKI. We commonly come across organizations that have like 10 plus deployments of PKI with different vendors. They have different protocols and policies. They have different encryption algorithms that they're using. And it's really becoming a nightmare for them. I frequently have CISOs say to me, what keeps me up at night with my PKI is the unknown. Uh, we did a survey recently and 47% of large organizations said that they frequently come across unmanaged or un, um, unknown certificates. Those That unknown is a risk to your organization. And because of that, we're beginning to see a trend towards what I am calling PKI harmonization. And what I mean by that is it's bringing your PKI into a harmonized deployment where you have a harmonized, you can use the same platform. And that of course can, can be a pitch for, for Digicert. We have, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, having uniformity with your platform can be a great cost savings, but it also gives greater control over your deployments because it gives a single pane of glass to all of your PKI. Having harmonization of your root strategy, um, knowing that you have um, discipline and um, organization to the way your roots are, um, are deployed. Having governance policies, how is the PKI to be used? What's appropriate for revocation? What's appropriate for certificate life cycle? Um, what are the validity periods of your certificates? But having governance and operations that are actually laid out. So when your organizations, if you have a product team that needs to use PKI, you have a blueprint of how they do it effectively. Um, and I've listed a few other things that are benefits of harmonization, having reports for all of your PKI, whether that be SSL, uh, enterprise PKI, code signing, 
um, reporting and auditing is very important. But ultimately, it gives CISOs and it gives product management ultimate control and leverage uh, of their PKI. So finally, I will just do a, a quick plug. Um, DigiCert is very proud of our flagship uh, platform, which is DigiCert One. Uh, DigiCert One is a very flexible and a scalable platform that provides a single pane of glass into all of our different managers, whether that be IoT device manager, which, which I love, of course, uh, enterprise PKI, our signing manager, document signing, SSL, TLS. Um, we have a single pane of glass that allows our customers to manage and control all of their PKI. Um, with our IoT device manager, I'm particularly proud of, of this product. Um, we offer flexible deployment options on-prem or cloud-based. We have robust um, device management with automation built in. We, as I mentioned, have the ability to be flexible in how you provision those certificates. And we can help you do that, whether you want to do it in the supply chain at the point of manufacturing or once the device is in the field. And we have uh, robust reporting um, that gives um, insight and transparency into the certificates and the devices uh, that are using and leveraging those certificates for security. Um, I really appreciate uh, everybody joining today. Um, I will close by saying it is very important to get your PKI right. Um, PKI done wrong, um, it's, it's like having your... Uh, your password to your laptop on a, on a sticky note. You need to do the PKI right. You need to set it up in a way that allows for scalability, for management and control. Um, as more and more certificates are deployed to IoT devices, the volume is going through the roof. Um, we have clients today who have deployed over 500 million certificates. You think about the challenge of managing and controlling those of having peace of mind to know that you have the ability to manage in an effective way. Those is very important. Um, really appreciate everybody joining today. Um, I have confidence in telling you PKI is the starting point for IoT security and really excited to continue working in this space. And if you have any questions or if I can be of help in any way, uh, whether that just be through a quick phone call or an email, please reach out to me. I'd love to have that discussion with you. Thank you so much for your time today.